and welcome to the program. I am Deji Badimasi. Now, three weeks after a dramatic round of presidential and national assembly elections, Nigerians trooped out again to cast uh, their votes now for the candidates of their choice in the governorship and state house of assembly polls nationwide. That election, of course, took place March the 18th. Out of 28 states where governorship elections took place, the Independent National Electoral Commission has so far announced 26 winners or governors elect, if you like. Now, the election in two states, Kebi and Adama, were declared inconclusive. As to be expected, there were some upsets in the governorship election. And the biggest one is that of uh, Zamfara State, where the governor, Bello Matawale of the APC, lost his second term bid to the candidate of the PDP, Dauda Lawal. Now, not many people saw that coming. In fact, Matawale is the only sitting governor who lost a second term bid in this cycle of election. All the other governors seeking second terms won. Now, many had expected the Labour Party was going to build on the momentum, uh, the momentum now it gathered during the presidential election and probably win some state uh, governorship election, but that did not happen. The party was only able to win one state with the ruling All Progressives Congress APC taking most of the states, followed by the main opposition People's Democratic Party now, PDP, uh, winning the rest. Now, the biggest talking point of the election is a series of violence that trailed the governorship and state assembly election across the country. According uh, to the European Union Observer Group, the violence claimed at least 21 lives. It's really sad. There, was also, there were also cases, I should say, of voter intimidation reported in states like Lagos. But by and large, the election went on peacefully in most uh, places across Nigeria. We now wait for the supplementary election in both Kebi and Adama states to finally conclude this election cycle. So we'll wait for when INEC, of course, will fix uh, those inconclusive elections. Uh, but uh, let's now uh, look at some of... Um, we just take a, a deeper look now into how the governorship election actually played out. I'm now being joined on the program by three gentlemen to help us dissect the results and dissect the outcome of the election in some of the states. Now, I have uh, here in the studio Dayo Akintobi, who is a political affairs analyst. Dayo, thank you for making it once again, and you've been with us throughout this process. Thanks for coming around again. Always a pleasure to be here. And then we have Libros Oshoma, who is a political affairs analyst and a lawyer as well. Libros, thank you as always for making it. First off, let me start with you, Dayo. How would you assess the governorship election generally? Well, all, all told, I think it went quite well, actually, um, considering the fact that uh, only one of the incumbents actually lost and uh, all the others mm -hmm. were able to return except for the states where um, governors had completed their second term. Of course, as you mentioned, um, it was a, a rather a disappointment to uh, the Labour Party that it wasn't able to, to fare much better in mm. the uh, governorship and state house of assembly elections, which kind of goes to show that Peter Obi was really um, the lightning rod for the obedient movement mm. and that once he was out of the picture in the presidential race that momentum couldn't be sustained to help win governorship seats and uh, state house of assembly seats i also think the extra one week delay um, okay. that INEC added to the time for the election may also have done something to dampen the momentum of, of the Labour Party. So I think that's the big story um, that's really coming out of uh, this second election is the fact that the Labour Party didn't do as well as it did in the presidential, presidential election. Uh, election. Libros, do, do you share that same sentiment that, you know, that the Labour Party may probably have done better if this election had taken place the way INEC had originally scheduled it, if there had been no uh, postponement? Yeah, um, I do also know. I don't think so. Because um, let's look at if If Obi had won the presidential election, mm. uh, that zeal, that momentum would have been there to continue, even if the governorship election were postponed three weeks or even four weeks after. Mm. You know, because um, the movement would be encouraged. But with what happened um, with um, the presidential election, um, the um, issue with um, the inability to upload results, that was one area where you know a lot of persons who felt they had hope in the system, you know that dampened their hope. 
Uh, secondly, also, a, a lot of them felt some of the candidates, take uh, the Benue governorship uh, candidate of the Labour Party, for example, who was who had crisscrossed, traversed the length and breadth of the... Haman Hembe. You know, from PDP to APC. APC, different to, parties. And then, then to Labour. So a lot of them felt, you know, uh, you could describe it as, in Nigerian palace, what you call problem change name. So <laughs> these are the same people who had been, you know, in the, in the major political parties, really trying to ride on the goodwill of um, Peter Obi. If you also, you know, look at a uh, disagreement between the Labour candidate, between some of the obedience um, in, um, uh, on the uh, candidate, uh, Labour candidate in Enugu State, for example, and the Abga candidates. You know, some of them felt the Abga candidate was more credible, hmm. you know. Okay. Unlike Abia, where the Labour candidate had consistently been on ground since 2015, He's fought on, that on a battle. different platform. On a different platform, it was in Abga, you know, until Abga became a cash and carry, you know, for politicians. I think and he then contested. He did he contest on the platform of PPA or something? Because I know he contested 2015. No, he uh, was he was in Abga in 2015, uh, 2015. And 2019. And 2019, he was in Abga, and uh, it wasn't easy for him because most of the the slots or the positions were were on cash and carry basis, and so that didn't work heavily in his favor. And then. Uh, Couple with the fact that let me let me quickly okay. ask you something about Abia, even though we're still going to talk about it. What what do you think worked for Alex Oti? Do you think the mere fact that uh, he was running this time on the platform of the Labour Party was just enough to to give him that uh, that that seat? No, no. Alex Oti in 2015, if you remember, lost that election narrowly. A lot of people, you know, supported him. The fact that um, but he didn't do well in 2019. No, he didn't. 2019, he didn't do well at all. Uh, the fact that Oju Zokalu um, didn't do well as a governor, followed by Teodor Oji, who took the ball, you know, even far lower than it was. Aba became like a heap of dustbin. And then you know? And then Okezek Bazu came. They were seeing the good works of the governor of Ebony State, and they were only consistently comparing. So, you know, I was in Abia, if you remember the stories. Yes, exactly. You know, so, and um, so all of those things, it, it fired up the people when Alessuti came again. And they coupled with the fact that he was campaigning on the platform of a Labour Party, you had to be. Uh, so that also encouraged a lot of people. So Alex Oti was already, you know, fully on ground in Abia, thanks to the, you know, misgovernance of the PDP-led government. So that's little push from And, the and that obedience. misgovernance lasted for a very long time. A very time. long time, a very long time. Uh, let's, let's look at... Um you know, let's let's take a deeper look now at some of the results. Uh, in the Southwest, of course, governorship election only happened in three states. And uh, these are the states, Lagos, Ogun, and Oyo. Now, the other states' governorship election did not happen because, um, uh, I mean, they've had their elections there earlier. So they had off-cycle elections. So uh, let's, uh, 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 Dio, let's, let's look at the outcome of uh, the, the, the election here in uh, Lagos. Uh, the PDP was expected to give the APC a run for its money. But something happened. When Obi won the presidential election here, uh, the conversation simply shifted. Attention shifted to the Labour Party. You know, people started talking less about the PDP candidate. And uh, there you have the results. Are, are you surprised at the outcome? Yes, I am. I um, actually had expected uh, Labour to have to be more competitive in Lagos in light of the way the presidential went. But I think uh, APC and uh, some of the other detractors of the Labour Party uh, played the ethnicity card very well, managed to cast the Labour uh, candidate, uh, governorship candidate in Lagos, managed to cast him as an outsider and not a, an indigenous Lagosian, and they played the ethnic card successfully. And, um, well, uh, you mentioned the PDP. Of course, Labour's entrance into the race was a negative for the PDP because every single vote that would have gone the PDP's way went the Labour Party's way. So that kind of was a knockout blow for the PDP to begin with. But the main issue focusing on the Labour Party is why they didn't perform to the level of expectation or at least commensurate you, you, with what You don't think happened. they did very well by getting this amount, uh, this amount of vote? 312 is no mean feat. Well, juxtapose that with how they did in the presidential, and this looks poor. If you look at the fact that not only did they... Uh, but but you, you don't think the issues this time for, for the governorship are different and that you have different uh, candidates now running? And so, you know, when, when the voters come into the governorship election, they think differently. 
Well, no, because I think the groundswell of support that the Labour Party got, mm. it was kind of an, an uh, adherence to an ideology. It was a movement. It didn't really seem to have much to do with the individual candidate. It seemed like they were tired of business as usual. They wanted a fresh breath of air. They wanted somebody different. They wanted a new ideology. And that was what played out in the presidential. So even though, yes, Obi, Peter Obi was a lightning rod in the presidential, but he represented a wind of change, which we thought would carry over into the governorship. But what I'm saying is that the APC managed to play their cards right in those three weeks. They managed to demonize the Labour Party candidate. They managed to dilute the essence of what the Labour Party stood for, and they successfully uh, uh, warded off the challenge at the polls. Libros, it, it, do you think this was a case of the APC demonizing the Labour Party candidate and playing the ethnic card, and that's what gave them victory in Lagos? It much more than that, um, because also the mind you, the Labour candidate uh, had accused the APC of um, voter suppression, that in areas um, where they tagged as their stronghold, the stronghold of their supporters, um, especially also uh, people from um, the southeastern part of Nigeria, that there were voter suppression, there were violence in these areas, and that so ordinarily that these people would have voted for them. So these are some of the issues that they have raised. Um, and then also, we also saw that during the presidential election, votes, you know, actually for labor came from these areas. But there are also challenges um, some persons have also said that, unlike the presidential election uh, race, uh, there were certain persons that were not happy with the Muslim Muslim ticket of um, the presidential yes. candidate, of, candidate the APC, of the APC, but that were comfortable with the uh, governorship candidate of um, the APC in Lagos. Hmm. And then, you know, one them, that um, ethnic card was played, it was almost like, because also the labor didn't calculate, it was a very wrong calculation for them also, Immediately after the presidential election, the presumption was that, you know, certain persons gave, you know, the votes. Certain ethnic groups. Ethnic group. And yes. then, you know, um, all of a sudden... And, and you got the impression like the Labour Party was trying to appeal to that ethnic group. Uh, uh, that ethnic group. So and all, then of, all a of a sudden, sudden his mother was brought into Chinedu a press conference. You saw added to the name and, you know, all of that, of the candidate. And so it, was, uh, it became a very good we weapon for, you know, uh, the APC to demonize you know, the candidate. And then you saw old women also, some persons that also didn't vote earlier on from the um, Arewa stock also, certain persons who felt they were not appealed to. And then Kopo also gave it to the governor. He went round almost everywhere. That's that sure. one week extension mm. gave him an opportunity to go round every corner, appeal to everybody that needed to be appealed to. And so you saw a lot of them coming out to say, you know what, this time around we are not going to fold our hands. So if you put the numbers, you see that actually a lot of people, you know, also actually came out. But quickly, if you permit me, mm. um, Ogu State, because it is the same, yes, the exactly. same region, mm. um, what happened, if you look at the two major candidates, the PDP candidate and then the APC candidate, yeah. are from the same Remo, you know? So a lot of Remo votes went for, a lot of the Jebu votes went to the PDP candidate because the idea and the impression was that another person from um, Remo, you know, would um, get a fresh start probably eight years. Eight years. But the Yelwa group, <laughs> the Yelwa group felt, you know, the ADC candidate is a Yelwa, hmm. supported by the former governor, but they felt that that... That's Amosu. Uh, yes, uh, Amosu. Hmm. And they felt that that candidate might not have the, the right um, support. So what they did was to support the incumbent on the belief that all the the incumbent will just do four do years. Yeah. Yes, after the four years of the incumbent, then naturally, you know, he also will support a yellow candidate because they've never produced a governor. You know, so that was why you saw the margin, you know, very slim. And then for uh, Oyo, we know what happened in Oyo, mm. how you know that that alliance, that alliance. deal between the APC presidential candidate and the governorship candidate. That was why I think Teslim was the first, you know, to horribly. Uh, Congratulate and concede you know, defeat. Concede defeat, um, and uh, because a lot of people, you know, a lot of people missed the point, and um, you know, just went um, uh, concluded that it was all about uh, performance. Dio, very briefly, uh, because we just have to go to uh, the, the next, uh, uh, the next uh, geopolitical zone. But very briefly, briefly now, I still want us to talk about Lagos. Uh, the PDP candidate before the presidential election, 
Uh, everyone thought this was going to be a straight fight between the APC and the PDP. I mean, the PDP candidate was very much in the equation, but things changed after the presidential election. Why do you think the PDP candidate performs this badly? Well, remember that he originally started out in the APC, and yes. it was uh, due to some differences of opinion and disgruntlement that he moved to the PDP. And it wasn't very long before the elections that he actually moved. So whether he was able to win the support of No, 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 he, he did move because, I, I mean, this is someone I, I know very well. I know yeah, he started campaigning like two years before now. Not in the PDP, though. If, yeah, not in the PDP. Right. Yes, you are correct, not in the PDP. But even in the PDP, mm. when he left, I mean, he... This individual campaigned very hard. Mm -hmm. I, I, I dare say even m much harder now than uh, the, the LP candidate. But We're, without a doubt. But what it goes to show is that campaigning is not the only thing that wins you elections. There's a whole lot more to, to winning elections. For example, um, the, the incumbent ran on his record. That yes. gave him some momentum. Then the person who came second ran on this whole uh, uh, groundswell of NSARS, the youth, the obedient factor. He ran on that notion of youth uh, change, mm. breath of fresh air. What exactly did the PDP candidate have to offer that was any different? First of all, it's from the same stock of people we've seen in Lagos for the last 24 years. He really didn't have anything different to offer from what was already on the table. Do, do, do you share that sentiment, Sorry, Libros? Did you, did you quickly? Very quickly. Um, if you if you remember, um, over time, the southeastern part of Nigeria had consistently, you know, followed PDP, PDP. from 1999 mm. till date. Mm -hmm. And if you look at um, some areas where even voter suppressions, you know, were uh, occasioned, the PDP had always, you know, did that. These are their stronghold. Badebo also, mind you, came from the PDP. So that is splitting yes. the votes of the PDP. PDP yeah. And then there was in-house fighting in the PDP at, uh, at the center. But the judge also, who was also fingered as, you know, one of the supporters, strong supporters of uh, Badibo, was in PDP. He remained in PDP in Lagos. These are people. But he later moved to Labour. He later went to, he went to back uh, the Labour yes, Party. He yes, he was in he... PDP, but was backing the Labour candidate yes. because these are people you expect ordinarily over time consistently had been the mobilizers of the PDP. But here you have an APC, a former APC candidate, coming to PDP, clinching the ticket of the PDP, and then picking a running mate who was not a politician at all, who said she had um, 20 million um, followers on, on social media. And these 20 million followers, a lot of them might be abroad, not even in Lagos. So against all of this, where you now take a large chunk, you take a large chunk of the traditional PDP, PDP people who now moved with Obi because mind you, Obi left PDP also. Mm. Who moved with Obi to Labour, and then you now have, you know, these people traditionally with the presidential election result voting for Labour. You know, it was obvious that PDP will have to reinvent itself mm. to actually, you know, sell uh, their candidate. And then, um, like um, my colleague has said. There was nothing really to reinvent, so it became um, a, a, a very flat one. And even some of the PDP members complained that Labour were actually harvesting their votes. Mm. All right, so uh, let's quickly take a short break now, but we'll be right back to breeze through uh, the other geopolitical zones and uh, see how the election there played out and what actually influenced the, the outcome. So stay with us, don't go away, we'll be right back. Opinions are free. Facts are sacred. The truth is universal. How, in practical terms, can we, for instance, de-escalate the tension? The president must see himself as the president of the Federal Republic. We know where the enemy is. Three places. Um, the Lake Chad Basin, the border area between Nigeria and Cameroon, and then the Sambisa Forest. On DG 360, we give you a complete dose of everything. Opinion, facts and undiluted truths. I hardly believe what politicians say in this uh, part of the world. The new Nigeria is possible, the future is possible. We delve into the issues, dissect it so that you can understand it, use it to take action. I don't think there's any need for any governor to look for grant for ranching. Digi360, dissecting the issues. <laughs> 